What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Back with my original segment, Ego Weight Watchers. If you're new to the channel, what Weight Watchers is, is just like the title suggests, I give you a look into the fighter's lifestyle before and after progress picks, especially if you have a fight coming up. Now, September 10th, the O2 Arena in London, we have a fight not many people expected. Gennady Handel, guys, versus Kel Chocolate Brownie Brook, right? So, Let's take a look into it. They did the WBC mandatory 30-day weigh-in where they just weigh in the fighters for title fights that hold that belt just to make sure they're in line within a certain threshold to making the contract to weight, which at this fight is taking place at the full 160. Now, Tom Loeffler, he reposted this or retweeted this. It's a picture of Brooke. He looks pretty massive. He has a million people in the gym with him. Tom Loeffler said, Kel Brook, looking big and strong for September 10th. Much bigger heart than most middleweights. Eddie Hearn, hashtag Triple G Brook. So, just looking at the, the picture, he looks pretty big. And let's keep going. And Tom Loeffler also posted this. It's a picture of Gennady Golovkin touching the scales at 165 pounds for the 30-day weigh-in. And he says he's ready for September 10th. And there you can see it. Gennady, hey, no, 165. So that's his weight. Now, in that picture that you guys just seen, Kel Brook is actually weighing 176. That's what he touched down at on the scales. So some people are probably going to be shocked like by this because one's a welterweight, one's weighing once the middleweight's weighing 165, and Kel Brook's weighing 176. So um, to me, it's it's not too shocking. I kind of like Kell Brook. I know he he said he was killing himself to to make welterweight or doing crazy things or whatever. So I knew he was big. 11 pounds is pretty big. Like like you're 11 pounds bigger than the middleweight. That's kind of weird. But to me, I think this is just my opinion. I think one of the things is the fighters that are doing this quote unquote daring to be great. They approach it in a wrong way. Like you know what I mean. Like when you're used to cutting weight to make 47 then you know you have to stay on a, a stringent, tight schedule with your, your workouts, your eating, because you're crunching down and dropping 20, 30 pounds over a course of two months or whatever it is, right? When fighters like Kel Brook are fighting Golovkin at 160, I think they try to come in heavy, like, oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I don't have to really worry about my weight. I can keep fighting at these higher weights and that'll give me added strength because I'm fighting this, this big, big guy named Gennady Golovkin who has a punch things of that sort so I don't know if I would advise that I mean September 10th is the the judgment day but I think Amir Khan's and the Kell Brook those are the two British fighters who have recently done this where they're jumping up fighting at technically at middleweight you know what I mean fight fight weights that they haven't fought and I think that's not what they've been campaigning at so I don't think you should do too much different than what you have been doing. Obviously, you're not going to drain yourself down to, to 47. But coming in 11 pounds heavier than Golovkin, like just slowly coming down on weight, I don't know if that'll help you too. Because at the end of the day, the reason why this is not good to me is because Golovkin can crack. He got power. And if you've been draining down to 147 to make wait to fight Kevin Bezier's and Jojo Dan and all these guys right now all of a sudden you kind of throw your body for a loop by coming in heavy and not really monitoring your weight as much you know what I'm saying you're 11 pounds heavier than the middleweight champion you know what I mean? at the 30 day win so you're not really worried about coming down so to speak so things adverse effects to that could be when you get in there you might be like a Conor McGregor versus Nate Diaz, where you look great in the first round, but as the fight wears on, you you get tired quick because you have that added muscle, that added weight that you're carrying. And that's not the person you want to be in the ring with if you start to fatigue. And just le like lethargy and fatigue can set in in general when you're carrying added weight. Just imagine when you get into like a pool and you feel like real dense and real heavy and stuff. Imagine if you eat eat a bunch of food and go swimming. You don't, you know what I mean? You, you feel weird, you feel heavy. So I don't know that this is a good thing. I think maybe Kell Brook and his team think it might be. Maybe he can prove me wrong. Um, 
but him being this heavy I don't know if that's a good thing for him because he needs to be mobile he needs to be able to use his legs he needs to be able to especially early because Golovkin has a good jab he's taller than you I don't know about the reach probably longer than Kell Brook's arms he's mass wise he's bigger so it's not a bodybuilding contest you know what I mean and I think a lot of fighters who are doing this oh I'm daring to be great thing they keep going into it with the the notion that oh okay I'm the bigger man and I can eat up and I, I don't have to worry about coming down but your body is a complex machine and it works in cycles so it's kind of based on what you programmed it to do like there's been times in my life where I was doing my thing working out getting up early having really productive days so no matter what time I went to sleep I would always wake up early because I had been doing that and it was hard for me to sleep in now I'm not on that same schedule so I could sleep in a little bit later and I don't naturally wake up at 7 in the morning or 6 a.m. but when I was real strict with myself that's what I was doing and the reason I'm bringing that up is because that's how complex your body's machine is as a machine it's gonna remember the last thing you did it's kinda of based on what you program Kel Brook has been programming programming himself to make 147 and now all of a sudden he he's doing this which is coming in extremely heavy and that's kind of the opposite of what he has been doing for a while now you know what I mean so I don't know that's what he wants to do at this point I think he's maybe late 20s early 30s fluctuating with weight deadly game you know what I mean because you never know how you look but we'll see I mean from the pictures just from the eye test like if you're if Kel Brook was on the beach or something you'd be like okay he's, he's in good shape um but it's different when you get in there, especially when you get in there with a Golovkin, a guy who can punch. Uh, I'm just trying to tell people, like, it's not all about it's not all about weight. You have to consider other things other than weight. You have to consider things like how are you going to move? Are you going to fatigue? And I think those things are all realistic questions that Team Brook needs to come up with the answers with. So props to Golovkin for coming in light. I think that serves him well. Um... Brooke being in 11 pounds I don't I don't know what that really does for him because this is the thing everything Brooke is doing is more unnatural Golovkin is fighting at a weight where he's proven to be strong he's fought there since his amateur career late his amateur career he fought at 160 so he's not having to make any type of different adjustments the only thing he has to do is adjust to Kell Brook as a boxer as a fighter come up with a game plan for that particular style meanwhile Kell Brook is doing all this stuff coming in heavy this would this is not what he has been doing in his last couple of fights you know what I mean he hasn't been used to carrying this extra weight and stuff like that and, and it's hard I mean even Michael B Jordan he said um I remember he was doing an interview after Creed came out and they're like what kind of training do you do he was like man I had to eat I had to eat so much I was eating so much and he's like now you look at me I'm not as big as I was for the Creed movie because it's just hard to maintain that. It's just hard for to to keep doing that. So he did it for basically for the purpose of the role, and he was still in good shape, but he wasn't as big as he was when he played Adonis Creed because it's it's hard to do that. So the reason I'm saying that for for Kell Brook is he's the one to me that is having to do something that is a bit more out of character for his body, like, and that's just being extremely heavy. So. I don't know. Maybe he's performing in the gym and they have a game plan. But I'm I'm going to definitely watch the fight. I still feel the same way. I feel with Gennady Golovkin. He's the guy that just indeed has to do less. He's the guy with the notorious power. Kell Brook is the one that has to fight more of the perfect fight. And if he has any kind of weight issues where he ballooned up in weight and he's weighing this and um, his body's not used to it and he fatigues, punches himself out, he's a dead man in there. You know what I mean? He's going to be a sitting duck. Let me know what you guys think. Drop it in the comment section. Make sure you like my video as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off.